My name is Andrew Thorpe King, and this is the Failure Rules Podcast. Because after it sucks, failure rules. Ray Bradbury, author of Fahrenheit 451 and the Illustrated Man, confessed that every morning he jumps out of bed and steps on a landmine. He explains further that that landmine is him. He then revealed that after the explosion, he spends the rest of the day putting the pieces back together. Actor Dwayne The Rock Johnson advises that we should strive to be the person that when your feet touch the floor in the morning, the devil says, oh shit, The Rock. Some days I feel this way, but most days, I wake up, slowly peel myself out of bed, desperately trying to remember what my day is supposed to look like. Then I set foot on the crookedly placed area rug beside my bed and step on the landmine that is me. Like Ray Bradbury, I then spend the rest of the day putting all the pieces of that explosion back together again. Most days I wake up in an indiscriminate fog, struggling to shake off weird and often frightening dreams. I wake to decouple myself from a tornado of ambition, fear, insecurity, and irrational ego. I am a landmine. On right focus mornings, I get my day started slowly, like deliberately diving right into the tornado of thoughts and feelings that need to be confronted. The landmine has already exploded before I even get caffeinated. My first act of confronting the chaos of this daily explosion, the act of awakening to consciousness, is to try to tick off areas of gratitude in my mind. I reflect and I pray. Then I envision the overarching areas of my day that I want to shape and make an impact on. This is my first act of taming the beast that is me, of stamping out the chaos created by the landmine that is simply me just waking up. My second act of taming the chaos that lays waiting for me each morning is dealing with the mess collected in the kitchen sink. Dr. Jordan Peterson advises that one ought first clean their room in order to kickstart their journey of chaos taming. Well, I suck at cleaning my room, and I hate it, so I do dishes. Doing the dishes is my centering activity. This is the first accomplishment of the day. As I scrub and tame the cluttered chaos left by the previous evening's meal, I physically feel my body calm into an organized rhythm. My mind begins to ease into a focus on what lies in the day ahead. I drink black coffee while I do it. The combination of the caffeine surge and the creation of kitchen sink order grounds me in the chaos tending mindset I need to make it a great day. Then I push forward into my work day, inspired by the chaos around me, inspired to ignite creativity and use it to shape chaos into order, to effectuate criticized work output, to enhance significant relationships, and to enjoy the habitable newness that comes from burning creation from disorder. Journalist and high school dropout Tim Pool's career was born in the sweaty chaos of the Occupy Wall Street protests of 2011. Tim had no college degree and no credentials. He grew up in a lower middle class household on the south side of Chicago. He had not finished his high school education, let alone acquired any higher education. He left high school at age 14. Tim Pool was a landmine. He went to the Occupy Wall Street protest with the goal of capturing some meaningful and unique moments in history. He live streamed his experiences with video and aerial drones. He let his viewers live chat with him while he did this and he allowed their input to guide where he would position his shooting of the protest. The aerial drone he used was a toy remote controlled parent AR drone that he modified with software for live streaming. He called this system Drone Stream. His footage attracted mass attention. No one had ever done this the way that he had. His drive and ingenuity all came catalyzed while he slept in the dirt amidst the chaos of the protests. He made a dent in journalism history. His footage ultimately was used as evidence leading to the acquittal of photographer Alexander Arkbuckle, who had been swept up and arrested by the NYPD during the protests. Poole's footage proved that the arresting officer had lied under oath. Poole confronted the chaos of his own bottom floor career status by documenting the external chaos of the Occupy Wall Street protest with a bold, innovative act of unprecedented journalism. This ultimately blossomed into a multi-threaded career, including working for Vice Media and Fusion TV. He went on to be nominated as Time 100 Personality in March 2012. Poole leveraged the creative, reshaping power of chaos to ignite his Thing 2 dream of performing unmistakable journalism. He spoke a little bit about the ethos that drove him during an appearance on the Joe Rogan podcast. Poole and Rogan were discussing the flaws and the rigid notion that upper mobility was unachievable. While they both acknowledged that there will never be an equal set of cards dealt for everyone to launch their pursuits, they both agreed that one of the main ingredients of success was perseverance. They discussed that sometimes the motivation that bursts the perseverance that leads to success is having been dealt a bad set of cards. Rogan asserted that there's some benefit in being born with the shitty hand of cards as they continue to discuss. 
Poole shared how he is contacted often by people asking him how they can do what he does. He explained how he would walk them through the steps, many tedious and difficult, and most of them would reply with a litany of excuses for why they couldn't do that. They simply weren't willing to sacrifice their comforts to pursue the meaning that Poole pursued. Their current hand of cards was simply not shitty enough to motivate them. When you find yourself amidst the chaos of messy circumstances that appear like a hand of shitty cards, step back and look at it differently. Knowing failure rule number five, you are not your failures, is true. Remember that you are also not your messy circumstances. Use your creativity to find the reshaping opportunities within the chaotic cards you've been dealt. Use your ingenuity and then with applied perseverance, use the power of chaos to mold your life and circumstances into something new different and better than you may have previously conceived because your life and your very being may be a landmine just like mine is but that doesn't mean you don't have the power to put the pieces together after each explosion with forward enabling creativity day in and day out.